Come on, cat. Off my keyboard. You were so needy at the moment. I don't understand. Listen, you can't just be on my. You can't be in front of me on my keyboard. Come on, yeah, I'll just push you. You can be on my right hand, okay? All right? It's okay. I know I haven't cuddled you for like an hour, but it's okay. All right, if you just stay cool and don't freak out, it'll be fine. All right, that's right. You you found space on my desk. It'll be okay. Oh great, and Jenkins is now building. Yeah, stop building Jenkins. Why is Ubuntu not started yet? What's happening here? Should be starting Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Ah, oh, this stream is not going well. Do I have to restart this machine? All right, hang on. What's happening to my life? I spent like the past, God, a week in a bad mood, low mood, not bad mood. My microphone up enough. Hang on. Oh, are we getting it to load? There, that's bumped the gain up. That should be fine. Do I have noise suppression on? Hang on. No, I don't. Morning. Um, today we're starting strong with my cat bullying me on my desk and Ubuntu not wanting to run. I might have to shut down my Windows 10 machine. Um, force off. If your operating system can't be forced off, um, then, and still like survive, then it's not a real operating system. Spaghetti cat stream. What is going on here? Did I interrupt something? What the heck? And when Jerry wants to update, you have to nuke your computer. Yeah, that sounds infinitely better than this. Um, how about I just quit DOS forever? Um, that could work. Um, sometimes computers don't want to boot up, so you just have to quit. Are we not even getting to grub? the hell is happening? Oh. What was that? Was that good? I think I saw Linux. Did you do this, cat? I, I pat your stomach, cat, and you just jumped up. Like you're confused. Okay, we have a blinking cursor. I don't understand what's happening. Um, did I install a bad update? It wasn't like this the last time I touched it. Um, did I delete everything? Is, my, is it broken? So what's happening? Let's try sending F1, F2. All right, let's just try F1 then. Can we type in here? Yes, we can, but my cat is on my hand. No, I'm busy cat. Okay, what's happening?
I know she wants to be loved. She is loved. All right. Man, use a target. We reach the startup. Um, I don't see no startup Linux. I'm going to push you off the table in a second cat. If you don't ease off. All right, something's failed. GPU manager and light DM have failed. I think speak up has also failed. Okay. Let's look for some fails. Um, GPU manager. Fail to detect available GPUs and deal with any changes. All right, well, what happened to light DM? Seat type X local is deprecated. Surely that's not the only Xorg dumped core. What the fuck? Why? What's happened? All right, we're gonna have to update. I'm gonna have to full upgrade this. Um, something bad has happened. Uh, we're in trouble. We're in trouble, chat. Um, sometimes Linux does this. You know, just just the other day, I was upgrading Linux on my VPS, and uh, it just bricked itself. All right, uh, this is going to probably take a while. Um, I don't have anything cool to uh, to show in the meanwhile. Maybe I should just cut this out. Uh, I don't want this to count towards the the VOD time. I mean, we don't really need like a UE to do all this, do we? Uh, what, what else do we have going? Uh, I guess we could look at Windows for a bit. Nah, maybe not. I don't want to bring Windows into into this stream. I could run an ad break. You like ads? I'm not sure why Twitch would want me to run an ad break because I don't. I don't get any of the revenue. Minesweeper? I guess we could do Minesweeper. Um, where's OBS? The cat is on my hand though. All right, let's just do some quick um, programming minds, some Linux minds. Yeah, that dude's getting searched. Um, cat does not want me to, to do this. Um, probably one there that makes that fine there and there. Um, that's fine. Mine test. No, you asked for mines. Um, but, but that's fine. Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got a big one here. This is the big, the big. There's also one there, I guess. Um, Oh, what's the difference between a mine, a mine, and a mine? I don't know. Don't ask me weird, weird questions, all right? Um, yeah, you see that one? Figure that out. Only geniuses like me know how to play this game. English has too many duplicate words. It's not duplicate, it's repurposing. Um, oh dear.
So if this was here, that would mean all this would be free. But if this is here, that would mean any of this is fair game. So I don't know, it's here or here, and that messes with that one. I know that there's one here, like that's fine. Um, I, that could imply that this area is empty or not. I don't know. Um, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, so there's one in here. This says that there's two around, so that must mean um, there's two in here. So is one there? Um, this is actually, hang on. Let me try and brain this a bit, because I, Check Ubuntu. Yeah, it's nearly done updating. We're not going to finish this game, but I vaguely remember how to do this. So basically, you subtract a number of mines around in the squares to make it like one. So this is one here. So one, two. Um, <clears throat> I think that means that this is empty. Um, actually, I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, that was lucky. Um, so that means that's definitely one there, which means that has to be a mine. And because there's two there, we can cancel those out. Um, two there, we cancel that out. Three there, that's cancelled. Uh, we're cancelling a lot of people today. Uh, Linux is still updating, that's okay. Or just means there's one there probably. Uh, don't know where. I don't think we'll ever find out really. Um, there's three there already, three there already, five. That brings that to be a one and there's a one there. Um, so if there's one here, that means that one would have to be there. Um, if there's one here, That means the one would have to be, yeah, that two could still work. Not too sure. All right, hang on. Hey, look, Lohu, what's up? I think, I think we're gonna get Linux to boot. Hang on. I'll just close my mind game. Do you think X will work this time? Oh, uh, why? What did I do to deserve this? I don't even know why it makes that kind of a uh, gray border thing. All right. Anything on X still? No. Welcome to my Linux stream. I'm a little bit in tech hell. Um, sometimes when you try to boot X, um, it crashes and that's just something X does. Um, uh, why do you do this X? Um, X dumped core. All right, let's try and read the X log. I don't know if this is going to be the actual X log. Um, what driver is it using? QXL mode setting FB dev. QXL. Yeah, so it, it like figures out that I have QXL. Um, then it gets a crash. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do now is go to the details tab, uh, set the display. 
video to um, BGA. And then we'll see if this works. Maybe, maybe the QXL driver is broken. I hope it's broken. I also don't know why like it's putting up this, this thing, but it's always done that. So that's probably fine, right? That blinking cursor is marking me. All right, so this is, this is where we, I'm not doing a Minecraft stream ever, never. Cat, cat, I'm trying to type. Why? Fatal server error. V screen succeeded, but modified mode. What does any of this mean? What is happening? Oh, it crashed again. What's this? X is crashing. All right. Uh, all right. Um, yeah. Wow. Lots of crashes from X today. All right. Um, my cat has left me. So now what we're going to do is Uh, I guess I'm going to quickly Google this. So let's search up Ubuntu X crash. Twenty oh four. I know that's such a vague term. I don't know where Ubuntu's bug tracker is. Ubuntu bug tracker. Launch pad. Oh, the graveyard. I don't know. I haven't put any music on. All right, let's just see. We're gonna search for X. Light DM cra crashes with system D. Um, that could be it. Uh, I, c I can't tell, 1804. All right, all right, all right. So this one was made in 2015. This isn't where the bugs are. All right, all right, hang on. I guess we're just gonna have to debug this real quick. Um, so let's just open up core, core dump control GDB XORG. And let's see, fatal error. Um, let's just try a different output then. Um, we'll try vert.io. Um, we might have to maybe disable mode setting. Maybe this is finally the end of X. Do you think if I like ran Wayland, it would work? Whoa. Okay. All right, vert.io seems to have fixed it. Um, I, I think we have it. Um, yeah. Let's connect to my VPN. And let's try pinging Google. And of course, it doesn't work. All right, we're just gonna anti NSFWK Sask. What? Um, hang on. Is just is it just IP version four broken? Hang on. Let's try pinging. All right, so I'm not getting through to the wire guard. Thing. Do you actually have, <coughs> yeah, so we have networking outside the VPN. So then we put the VPN on and we're having routing issues, I bet, because, um, uh, 
I don't know what these, this routing table is supposed to mean. Um, hang on a second. Oh, it has like a connector thing up there. Oh, we, we've done it, I think. Um, let's see if we can. All right, so now let's go to the what is my IP page. And we can start the stream and the cat is over on my bed and I am freezing. And I am miserable. So, um, what is my IP? There we go. So that's my VPS IP address. Um, do we not have IP version four? Okay, we do, I think. Um, I just want to see the IP version four, please, please. Um, Twitch is not on the IP version six train yet. Let's ask Google. Google knows everything. Wow. Don't even let me click it, Firefox. Just flash new features at me. Just flash them at me. I don't want to click them. Um, what is my IP? All right, yeah. Um, that looks about right. And if we go to this IP, um, it should just be my VPS. Yep. Um, that should say that the host is blaine.jukia.org maybe? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I have a public IP version six for this VM. Um, it's, it's fully routable. Um, that's also why I had to install a firewall on this machine because uh, I only want to selectively put stuff on the internet. And for some reason, it just doesn't come with a firewall by default. Um, yeah, that's fine. Anyway, let's now try and connect to Twitch with our bot. Um, let's open up DOSBox. Let's copy uh, bot auth dot text. Um, we'll, we'll put a twitch tw auth dot text. Copy bot auth dot text. I'll put live lv auth dot text. Copy bot host. What other bot stuff did I have? Oh, that was an environmental thing. Um, so let's see edit. Um, copy bot test bot love. What? Dot bat. Edit bot live dot bat. So we're gonna set the bot host to be Twitch's IP address. I don't know if we have DNS resolving done. So we're just going to do, we're just gonna get Twitch's IP address real quick. One of those should be fine, right? Uh, 151, wait, it's irc.twitch.tv. Yeah. Uh, we'll go with 34.2. 17.198.238.6667. And we'll just do LV auth uh, bot LV. All right, let's see what happens. Improperly formatted auth. Okay. So I think I have to get some auth for this. I think it's expecting um, actual stuff. So if we go to drive C code, um, lv auth.txt, 
Um, I think we'll have to set the user to Jukebot 2000. I think that's it. Um, actually, is this the right order? Let's go to Twitch's I, um, Twitch IRC bot. Authenticate the user, let's see. Pass before sending Nick. I did though. I did. Why? Um. All right, let's grab the Twitch CLI. Um, use Homebrew. Manual download. Twitch CLI. Okay, we're gonna have to grab this real quick. Um, Linux AMD 64. Um, and then we'll just dump this um, with the rest of our junk here. Um, actually, if that's a single binary, let's just put that in local bin. God, if I actually, yeah, local bin is not in our path. Um, I think we, if we do make dear dot local bin and then we restart the terminal, it should be in the path. No, it isn't. Of course not, whatever, this will be fine. Twitch CLI. So let's do Twitch CLI, Twitch. Um, we want to mock Twitch API. What's that? Twitch mock API. Does this, does this handle, um, Chat? Is it handled chat? Chat. Please just tell me if it handles chat, chat and chatbots. Okay, probably not. All right, authenticating. Um, we use the token command. So let's do that. Um, user consent to the application. To get consent, you must set the redirect URL to localhost 3000 when registering your application. All right, um, I want a user access token. What scopes do I want? I think it's chat read. All right. Token US chat read. Client ID. What the fuck is a client ID? What's a client ID? Uh, okay, this is fine. Client ID. After registering, oh, I need to register my bot. Registering an app. All right. Why is there a fish? Um, <laughs> you only noticed now? All right, we need to log in to the developer console. Yeah, um, I am Jukebot2000. All right, we need to create an application and it's gonna be Jukebot2000. I don't know what the, Um, I think I need the callback to be local host 3000. Yeah. Um, category chatbot. Great. Um, 
the Jukebot 2000. So what's the client ID? Is this supposed to be secret? That does, that seems like, that seems fine. Um, oh, so that says it must be, all right, hang on. Client ID is that, client secret. All right, hang on a second. We're gonna have to quickly switch, switch that off. I'm gonna have to put the secret in. Are you sure you want to generate a new secret? God, the secret starts with emo. Um, and it brings me to an OAuth thing and I click authorize. Um, and it gives me a token. Um, uh, skillful means, huh? Um, it gives me a user access token and a refresh token. Uh, I'll just put this it, I'll just put this as like, um, Twitch receipt. Um, and then I will just try both of these. I think it's the one that I think it is, you know, back in the days. Hey, Catfo, what's up? I just don't want to get these credentials all over the internet. Numu and Willump, what? All right, so that has not worked. Just to verify, uh, I'm going to go, I know this is riveting viewing. I'm just going to quickly try and cannot con resolve IRC, what? All right, we're going to do pass, put the pass there. Um, user jukebot 2000, zero star jukebot 2000, Nick jukebot 2000. Improperly formatted auth. Um, oh shit, how do I do this without showing my token? I can't, can I? I can't. Hey, eternal wildfire. All right. Um, uh, the Windows 7 anime CD. I'm just gonna quickly just try and mess with the order of stuff. Improperly formatted auth. You're an improperly formatted auth. Okay, we're gonna come back here and I've minimized, hopefully, hang on. Yeah, I was right to minimize that one. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I'm getting improperly formatted auth back from Twitch. And when I manually connect to the system, it uh, gives me the same error. Shit, hang on. Let me just, let me just duplicate my, uh, my OBS scene so I can just switch between them, yeah? How do you duplicate scenes, duplicate? And this one will just have nothing on it. Okay. And that takes me back to what? Now this one doesn't have a screen. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Um, so we just go back here and I close the browser session, which has the secrets in it. OAuth really fun. OAuth not really fun actually. OAuth really not fun. Okay. Um, so let's see, I got me app, pass and Nick, 
Wait, you don't want me to send a user? Pass Nick. You don't want me to send a username? What? Is that, is that street legal? What does the fish do? It adds. Hang on, what's the, where's the IRC spec? I scrolled past what? I'm, I'm, I'm in the future, okay. Um, let's see. What's the dog doing? What? That's not a dog, it's a fish. So I'm supposed to send um, a Nick and a user, like connection registration. You send the pass and then the Nick and the user. I know Twitch uses their own IRC protocol, but it says it is based on that supported IRC messages. Wait, that's it? That's all of them? All right. All right, all right, hang on. So we're just gonna dump the Nick, but then I can't, all right, whatever. I'm not even using the local thing. All right, hang on one second. I'll just try it. I'll try it with my um, actual Twitch credential things. Um, yes, I'm aware there, I just deleted the user thing. So we'll just put Nick Jukebot. Thanks, Twitch. All right. Let's see if this connects then. Twitch, please. Please, Twitch. So I sent a password and then the nick. Oh, I didn't put the OAuth in it. All right. All right, hang on. Okay, let's try. <gasps> we did it. We did it. We're in the Twitch land. We've connected. Um, um, Dark Brandon, what the fuck? All right, so Jukebot2000 is here. Let me just close the passwords thing. And I'll have to quickly update the tests um, because my assumption was wrong. Yes, I connected with a DOS application. You got a problem with that, buddy? I'm like rolling up the sleeves, but I'm really cold. I'm ready to fight over this. Um, but yes, you'll see in a second. Um, but first we have to fix our tests. Um, because if we go to here and we run test.py, you'll see that it fails. No, this is the wrong test. Um, that's, that's a good test. I needed that one, but um, that's not the test I'm trying to do. So let's do bot test. Yeah, so we get an assertion error here. Um, we're expecting uh, to get a user string. So let's just find this. And we'll just comment that out. Um, <clears throat> 
and that still crashes because user is not defined. Um, for name in user one. Actually, we don't need this either. Um, does your bot have a test suite? Why am I clipping so much? I'm gonna have to edit the gain. There, that might be quite, uh, hang on. Do I have like, I don't have a monitor for OBS, so whatever, it's fine. Anyway, um, still waiting for that ping from Twitch. You don't know how to delete your own messages. That's fine. Um, how often does Twitch ping us? Does it ping us? Um, so, are you going to ping? Twitch doesn't send pings? What? No, it has to send pings. That's, that's a core. Oh, see, it's got a ping here. Keep alive messages. When are you gonna send it though, Twitch? Are you going to send it? Um, so the next thing we kind of want to do is, oh, here we go. All right, so we responded to the ping there. So this bot, now let's see if it quits properly. There we go. Um, does it actually have a quit message? Wait, does it not have a quit message? Um, supported IRC messages. That's a bit strange. How do we part? That's to leave a, that's to leave a channel, not to, um, not if I'm quitting the, so I guess it just, I guess it just checks if the socket has ended. All right, or whatever. What the fuck ever. Um, actually, I just realized we can keep our test. We just have to make sure we put the correct things in the auth thing. Um, does Twitch just ignore our quit message? It better. Um, because I don't give a shit if it doesn't. <laughs> All right, so bot auth dot text, and it was user jukebot um, hash zero jukebot. Um, let's see if this works. Time to play Dota. Which one? I think I just outed myself as a boomer. Um, user zero star. So Dota, that's like the bass hunter of, he was playing Dota in that song. He was at uh, DreamHack, the uh, world's biggest LAN party. Only boomers play Dota. Okay, let's try testing the bot. All right. So we have a bot that works live and then we have a bot that is going to not be live. Now, uh, 
this is where things get a little bit strange. Um, we're going to have to pass the messages properly. So um, as you can see, we have messages two, one, two, three, four, three, seven, five, three, seven, two, three, seven, six. And we're going to have to handle those ones as well. But first, let's check the to-do list. Uh, we need to work on code for login fail. Um, I don't think the message of the day contains sensitive information. It doesn't look like it. Um, that seems fine. Um, timeout test. I don't remember what that means. I need to give better notes. Um, string stuff. What the fuck? Okay. String operations library. Um, and this is going to be our parser spec there. We should also cap rec twitch tv slash commands. So I should put that in the auth perhaps. Um, yeah, so that goes before the auth. Um, we'll worry about that later. So what next? Yes, working on code for login fail. Um, what this really just means is that we're going to be adding a state machine. So let's open up our code. I also need to check the quit code. Um, it doesn't seem like it's doing a good idea. Um, Dispatch exit. All right. So this is our code for the bot, at least the bot part. We have code to read the authentication file. We have our initializer, which sends the auth message. Um, and we're going to have to start doing our state stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is we have dispatch line, which is called by um, the packet stuff. So um, we're just going to jump to bot state, if that makes sense. And then we're going to do, um, we don't need to write that it clobbers those. Oh, do we? I don't know, um, club is SI. Um, so we're going to do um, ping state or um, idle state. And this is where we will be doing the dispatch line. Um, jump bot state. So we're going to put the bot state there. I think you can do an indirect jump in 8086. If not, um, fuck. Um, and by default, we will have um, bot state. We just need to reserve, I think, four bytes for that. Yeah, that makes sense. And then we will just move. Um, Jump log general, yeah. Um, then we'll just we will do move. Um, what is it? Dispatch uh, idle state to um, bot state. All right. Let's see if that compiles. Uh, 
60. All right, uh, we'd have to clobber a register. Let's just use CX, huh? Invalid combination of opcode and operands. Please don't do this to me. Please don't do this to me. Wait, it should be, I think this needs to be indirect. Encoding overload, brah. Don't say that OBS. Um, double byte. No, that would, that's a word. When will I become a programmer? Not too sure yet. Okay, let's run bot test. Um, we will have to start up the test server to make sure that it's working. Pro gamer. Okay, let's see if this works. All right. And of course, if we comment this out, then it should just uh, crash. Yep. <clears throat> Minecraft PVP champion. That's not me. Why am I having like an encoding overload? What did I do to deserve this? Is my computer like, what, what's happening? It says my CPU is 6%. I have more CPU OBS, you can use it, it's fine. All right, so we have our states and we're actually going to start with, um, auth state. And so when we get back something with auth state, um, so during our auth state, we're going to need to um, look for our authentication response. I just comment that out. Why is that broken now? That shouldn't be broken. What? Why is that frozen? Why are you freezing? Why are you doing this to me? Um, Please. Why is this freezing? Has I'd like you to tell me why it's freezing. It sends the login credentials. It puts it in auth state. And in auth state, what it does is login coming and just basically does the ping state. Um, no, I moved, I moved the wrong thing. Hang on a sec, my computer's doing CI, I need to tell it to postpone it. Um, now's not the time, sorry Jenkins. Um, I did some commits um, earlier. 
on my project I'm working on and Jenkins wants to build. And that's okay, I want it to do that, just not now. You need RAM Cajole the computer sheet? What? Um, okay, so we're in auth state. What do we want to do in auth state? Well, I think, hmm. We want to check that we've actually managed to get authenticated properly. Um, so we have the auth state and then we have the message of the day state, which we can just ignore. The, tw the server just might send that all the time. Um, but we get this notice, login authentication failed. Um, and we get improperly formatted auth. So these are just basically the same thing. Um, so we can get that. Let's edit our to do file. So we can basically get that or this. Um, but it would be a little bit weird to hard code these, right? Um, since they're not error codes or anything. So what we probably do want to do is just have a timeout. Um, so we want to timeout. Um, if motored is not reached in 10 seconds. So that's our, that's our new goal. Um, I don't know how we're gonna accomplish that goal because we don't have any way to time this. Um, and it looks like Twitch will just to hang on to the connection for a while. And that's not good. Um, what we want is a message like this. We want to reach the message, which is um, the message of the day, which in this case is something like this. Um, so, Hmm. How are we going to do this? Um, this will handle any authentication fault, I think, assuming the server doesn't close the connection. Um, we also need to only quit if message, um, only quit if, if, something um, not too sure only send quit if we're in idle state or some shit um, but the first thing that we're going to have to write is a damn message parser so um, This is gonna be a bit hard to test. Um, but it's integral to the bot. So what we're going to do is when we have the message of the day, um, we're going to have to make it look like an actual message of the day. 
So we're going to put the server, which is the test server. Um, and then we're going to put not just MO2D, but we're going to put um, the numbers, I think. Um, let's just look at hex chat and see how that works. It's not loading. It is loading. It loaded. All right, so what did we get here? Um, uh, it's not showing me the raw form, uh, raw output of the RSC. <laughs> what? All right, um, let's do telnet localhost 6667. Um, and then we're going to do um, Nick Duke dude. Um, I think that should be fine. Ash zero Duke dude. All right, so this is what um, one looks like. Duke dude. Um, so this is the output of um, our local server. And because we have logging, we can do bot lv.log and we have the output of um, this. So let's kind of look at these a little bit more. So the command is a numeral here, um, but we can just pretend that that's actually just a number, com like it's, it's a text command, but the text just happens to be um, numerals. So command 001, 002, 003, 004, um, 005, that could be just lines. And then we have 251. Actually, let's just do this the, the smart way. Um, cut that off. Uh, cut that off. Cut that off. Cut that off. What about the fish? What's that N? That's new packet. Um, and then we're just going to pipe this. So that's the commands we have there. Um, so let's quickly look those up real quick and see what they mean. 0, zero 1, 1. ISC message 001. RPL welcome. So, does it list RPL welcome here? No. So let's search up RPL welcome. All right. Um, RPL welcome, RPL your host, RPL created, RPL my info, RPL I support. 372 is RPL message of the day, 375 is RPL MITSD start, um, 376 is RPL message of the day, uh, end of message of the day. What are these two five ones? Um, so 
Someone's messaging me on the internet. One check. Um, Kaz and Coz are messaging me. Apparently telling me that Drew found a new use for BBNs. That's pretty cool. Um, who is 276? What? Um, no, we have 251. IRC 251. No, not health core. IRC protocol RPL 251. Is this a Twitch thing? Hang on a second. Um, let's undo all the deletion I did. Um, no, this is a, so 375, 372, 376. Um, so the 251, 3, 4, 5, 5, 6, oh, 265. Um, let's just undo this a bit more. Kaz, are you okay? You haven't, you haven't eaten your, your uh, spaghetti today. Um, so we have those. Just tell your shit ass friends to get in the chat or shut the fuck up. I just was talking about you. So two, five, one, five, three, five, four, five, 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 six, three, seven, two is what is three, seven, two. All right. So what I'm reading here is that um, we're just gonna create a list of shit to dump. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then is that an ins, uh, Inspire City thing? You swallow the can hole. V3 commands, what? Handle losers, handle admin. Is that like a private range? Like what? Right, so two five one, two five two, two five three, two five four, two five five, <clears throat> two six five, two six six. Hang on, global users. No, please, I wanted to be down in that page. It's okay, you don't have to bring me back. Um. <clears throat> um losers. So what's 251? Loser client. Yeah, they're calling me losers. It's a little offensive, actually. Um, I don't want to get mad at this piece of shit list. Um, but yeah. 253, 254, 255, 256. Local losers. Um, 266. All right, so that would be losers and yeah, how work is it? All right. 
So we want to wait until we get a message of RPL welcome. So testing error conditions is going to be a bit tricky. I don't know if we can really do that here. Um, but um, let's replace the message of the day with something else. Um, I think it would be test server ping. Actually, how did Twitch handle the ping? Ping. Ping, and then it has the server. Okay, I see. That's a little bit weird. So let's do that. And then we will send a line. Um, zero, zero, 001. And so this should have the server at the start. Having choices is bad. Everyone gets upset about choices. Um, okay, so let's quickly look at our notes. Um, OT, your host is test server, created in 2000. Um, 37D, uh, we're going to start with the message of the day, which is, do we put the message of the day there? Yeah. Um, hey. <laughs> you go to crack a barrel to have the worst stomach pains of your life. Dear test bot, I hope you have a lovely day. Yours, Spaghetti Man. Okay, let's see how that fares. Um, okay, there's a lot of spaces there. So, <coughs> let's just, I really hate how Spaghetti man, OMG height. There, that's fine. I'm not gonna get upset about that. I'm not gonna get OCD about having it de-indented. There we go. Um, so that's a bit more of an accurate um, thing. So what we want to do is, um, Time out and wait until 001. Um, but we need to pass all this. So just before we start doing some passing, we're going to time out if 001 is not reached in, I guess, five seconds. All right. 
let's look at, oh, that shouldn't be test server. That should be the username. Hang on. Hang on, I'm a fool. I need to put in the username, test user. Oh, it's so sad and pathetic. I love it. Uh, how am I going to do this? Um, how about we just do this? I didn't do that as a macro. Okay. Um, we're going to do that. Wait, no, I can just do that. Um, yeah. You have all that in your fridge. What? Let's see if this works. That's right, I didn't add the user. Uh, we should return the user from here. And that should be fine. You have no energy to cook. Pathetic. Python can only concatenate string, not list to string. Um, excuse me? I returned a string. Oh, I didn't. Um, I should be returning that. There we go. I hate everything to make chicken parmesan. Oh. Okay, so the server looks a lot more realistic. Um, yep. So command to quit. So let's look at our message syntax. Um, that's the message syntax I got from somewhere on the internet. Uh, let's see. The message format here. Let's see if there's anything we have to add. So Twitch has the tags as an addition. Prefix space, command, parameters, CLF prefix, um, is server name or at Nick. Um, and it might have that at the end. And the command can be either that um, or that. Let's just grab this actually. Should be eating your spinach. Why? Um, there we have prefix space, yeah. Um, So that's our syntax we have to pass. 
Um, so let's see. So first we pass the tag. Pass tag, pass prefix, pass command, pass params, uh, pass CRLF. So this is kind of the, going to be the code we're going to write. So the pass tag, pass prefix, um, pass the command, um, then params has the space. So let's see, pass tag, um, we'll write consume, at consume word. So word is just going to be arbitrary stuff um, up to a space and then consume spaces. Prefix is just going to be consume um, that consume word and we'll have to store that at um, word um, at prefix. Prefix, uh, this will be tag. Um, then passing the command, the command is just gonna be a word. We'll be a bit loose with our definition there. Um, oh. So command. Consume word, consume spaces. Now what will we have in parameters? <coughs> we will have either, um, we'll have, this is weird. So we'll have to have a, what's trailing? We will have to have consume until So yeah, we're gonna have to have two of those. So we'll just consume until CILF. And then we will have pass params. So command, So that's kind of a literal thing. And then middle params. Oh, this is recursive. That's nice. Um, that's great. So we have an arbitrarily long list of uh, middle. Yeah, all right. So we pass tags, then we pass the prefix, and then we pass the command. Then we will have to get the parameters in a list or an array. And we're going to do this by just separating them with null bytes, maybe. I don't know. So this is gonna be our rudimentary parser. So pass command, then we pass um, or quit or 
um, or exit. And so it should be all returned there. So that's kind of a thing. So let's just, this params part is the annoying part because it can be arbitrary length. And we have to figure out, am I going to do this destructively? I think it might be the best idea to just null terminate and make things like that. Um, sorry if you can hear my heater. It's just really, really, really cold. And I just need a little bit of that heat. So how we're going to implement this is by, um, consume word is going to set a value null terminate. Makes you comfy know I'm, knowing I'm warm, yay. Um, so one, pot one potential issue is that, let's say I'm passing through something. When I get to tags, I pick that and I re replace space with a null terminator. That's not great. Um, I guess I could just have two values, the start and the end. Uh, not sure. I could just also have the length. Yeah, you know what? Set value, set length. We're not going to do null termination. Um, and we'll just point to pieces of this string here. What can prefix be? The server name or the nick? So. Uh, this is going to be unruly. Can we do the same thing there? We have server name or nick. What is nick? It doesn't say what it is. Oh, um, if it, it's a nickname, if it has, so this is just saying the same thing, but it tells you what it is. If it has, uh, that's weird. Um, trailing is just a syntactic trick. The null character is not specially message framing. Um, specify additional semantics and syntax. Uh, many server commands will send that the first parameter after the command is the list of targets. All right, that's fine. Uh, we're not going to past those. Yet yeah. we can, we can deal with passing that later. God, it wants me to see RFC 952 for details on allowed host names. All right. Uh, let's think about this and simplify it a little bit. Um, see, the thing about params here is I think that's meant to be space separated there. Um, non empty sequence of octets, which not including space or null or CR or LF. The first of which may not be that. It's 
So how are we going to test this? Oh shit. God, this is a nightmare. Oh, I've just gotten done testing one parser. Um, no, we'll just use integration tests. It'll be fine. It will be fine. Uh, this is more what unit tests were meant for. I'm regretting all this already. Um, that's okay. All right, it's time to start the parser. We'll just work on this one thing at a time. Um, for now, we're going to only handle the prefix, tags, commands, and then uh, we'll treat the prefix and tags and command as opaque. Um, and parameters that requires storing a list somewhere. Is there a way we can avoid that? I mean, we could avoid it by not passing it, right? Um, instead of passing it into a data structure, we could pass this when we're actually uh, handling the message. That seems like a kind of decent idea. So we will pass um, the tags up front. We will pass the prefix up front. We will pass the command up front. And then I'm not sure. Um, this, I'm not doing like dynamic memory allocation or anything. Um, but let's see, this is an example of it here. Uh, let's see, joining a chat room. Um, and then we have a whole bunch of stuff there, that's fine. Um, sending and receiving chat messages. Um, then we, when we get a chat message, that's how we send them. Receiving them, um, I mean, we could just hard code the limit of uh, arguments, couldn't we? Yeah, let's do that. Um, let's hard code, let's say we only support eight arguments. Um, So, eight args max, and then we'll deal with that with the parameters. Um, and then on top of all that, we'll add a test command um, that will just echo back something like um, echo the pass data. And then we have capabilities here. Do we want those? Probably at some point. Sample example bot. Uh, look how easy. Oh, that's some that's a little bit difficult to read. 
Oh, we should be logging in um, at 001. We should be joining stuff. Trip message. Past message. All right, so that has a parser. Okay. <clears throat> I wasn't planning on writing a parser today. Um, but I guess I am. I guess I am. <sighs> All right, let's at least start. Um, I don't want to see another parser. Uh, ever. I've spent too much time writing passes over the past year. Okay. Just get rid of them. And now we're going to write one in assembly. Oh, joy. All right. So... Let's start sketching this out. Immediately just delete the file. All right. So before we jump to it, we want to um, actually another thing I wanted to do was Let's remove the auth state thing since that's just the duplication at the moment. Um, idle state. We want to clear our um, buffer once we're done. Um, auth buffer. I'll just put that in the to do so we don't get too distracted. Clear auth buffer. So this is probably one of the la large, um, bigger parts of the bot. That we're going to be writing. Okay, remember your training, Duke. Remember what that guy said once about computers. I don't remember. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, when we're in idle state, we're going to call log incoming. But before that, we're going to call If it's not ping, then we're going to call um, pass message. All right, so also going to make that an extern pass message. Um, then we're going to make pass.nas. And this will be the thing that does the passing. Um, SI is string, CX is length. Um, returns nothing yet. Uh, pass message, and that will just do return for now. Um, Nothing in the section const. Uh, nothing there. BSS, um, we'll comment that out for now. We'll comment those out. Um, section text, all right. 
um, and let's edit the drive C code um, wmake file. God, there's so many files there. Make file. And we'll just put in uh, pass.object. All right, let's see if this builds and runs. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is check the make file there. Not the make file, the to do file. We're going to copy some stuff over. So we're going to just start with this. I'm doing it. Yep. I'm doing it. I'm making it happen. All right. So we're going to call pass tags. And pass tags, SI string, SI lengths. This should always be, we'll just return for now. Just put a to do. Actually, we won't even support tags. We'll do pass prefix. And then we'll create um, a buffer down here for the prefix, unless we will just point to it. Let's get technical. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. A little bit. So are we going to copy it to a buffer of our own? That is the question. Now arguments for this is that it's a good idea. So we're going to do that. Um, we're just going to do um, prefix, prefix length, um, there. So now we get to use the 8086 string operations. Um, actually let's push, um, SI and push CX, then pop CX and pop SI. So in our registers, we have SI and then we have CX. So we need to read a character from the string and decide what to do with it. Um, we also need to keep in mind the length. So let's see, where do we do the length checking? Um, we want to do the following. We want to check if, um, we want to peak byte check if that and then um, if it is consume byte otherwise quit peeks at me please don't not that again um, and then we want to consume spaces Consume non spaces. Um, consume non spaces, then we consume. Um, we want to set prefix to SI. Um, If it isn't um, return set prefix to SI 
set length to CX minus uh, how do we track the length here? Uh, we can just subtract the pointers. Um, SI minus prefix. And then we want to consume spaces. And then we return. So that seems reasonable. Um, now, when we consume non-spaces, we need to consider what happens if we run out of space. Like not space characters, but CX. If CX is zero, error. So we will return an error. Um, now we'll just return. Um, return. Uh, because CX is kind of the return code. Uh, ret if CX is zero. Um, then after that, we will also do a check there. And probably a check here. So this code is kind of messy. Um, it's not written yet, it's gonna look horrible. Uh, but we have a lot of kind of returning. So if, if it isn't that, then we return. <clears throat> this is like a prime place where you would want exceptions, but I'm not gonna write up exceptions. Um, this is going to be some gross code. Um, so first of all, how do we peek? Um, we're going to use the 8086 string operations because damn it, I want something out of this. Um, please, no, I don't want to log in to continue to read your 8086 stuff. Um, byte and string operation. Oh, please just show me. Just where did I go before? NASM um, instruction set. No, that's the wrong page. Why is, why is the documentation always the last one? Sorry, I gotta go get some water, all right? I know it's gonna annoy everyone, but my mouth is so dry. Be right back. And I gotta pee, so BRP. <coughs> I'm so fucking dead. <coughs> oh, hey, what's up? Welcome to my video. Um, we're back and today we're going to look at the instruction section down here. Instruction list, so conventional instructions. Uh, we're looking for, let's open up our 8086 manual, manual reference. Um, let's look at the assembly language reference guide. Um, is this searchable? No. Yes, we're looking for string operations. That's jumping, that's interrupts. Arithmetic. 
What, you don't have strings? Come on. Users manual. All right, string instructions. Okay. Mob SB. Um, so peaking. So what we can actually do is uh, mov, is it sb? Mob string byte. Um, let's just see. Wait, mob sb moves between. We want lods. Lots. Okay. So let's do lods. Um, just lods, I guess. Is it lods B? Yeah. Hey, what's up? How you doing? You new here, Kaz? We're gonna compare AX with, um, is it 3A? Yeah, it's 3A. Um, Um, is prefix. Um, so is prefix would be, if not, we're just going to decrement. Um, shit, no. This should be move. Um, I think it's SI there. And if it is the pref if it's not the prefix, then we just return. If it is the prefix, then we lods. Uh, that updates the pointer and CX, I think. Does it update the CX? I don't think it does. Uh oh. No, it doesn't. Um, shit. So we're going to do increment SI, dex CX. This is just rough for now. Uh, move prefix SI. And now we're going to loop not equals, um, or is it repne? Repeat why not equals? No, we don't actually transfer the strings. We're just um, doing a loop. Loop, um, loop any. Oh shit, jump if register CX equals zero. That's actually pretty cool. So we have, that saves us a compare and a test. Um, so we're going to do loop any. Uh, 
how do you use loop any? Wait, is that just... Oh, what? I think we want to try using SCAS or something. Scan string. No. Compare string. I'm going to have to check my packet thing to see how I did this. So copy loop. Oh, I just used a loop there. All right. All right, so we're going to save the prefix there and we're going to um, skip loop one, um, ink si dec cx. I kind of wish there was a way to do this, but better. All right, repeat, compare byte or word string, scarce lods. Hmm. Mobs compare compares strings. But that uses di and dx. So scas um, is basically what I want. That uses DI. I guess we'll just have to use DI. All right. But SCAS would also allow us to skip stuff. So how about this? Um, push di, pop di, move di si, and now we can use that. So we can do scas, um, al, so scas b, Move AL zero times three A scas B um, jump zero, I think.
They're like a conditional return. Yeah, okay, it's not. <clears throat> um, so scarce. Updates the flags, but does not alter. AFCF, OFPF, SFCF. So it should be zero, right? So if there's no difference, then it is a prefix. And then we will just do scarce B there. Does it decrement CI2, CX? No. So that didn't matter. There's a lot of fish going on today. Maybe I should just delete the fish. It seems to be distracting everyone from my craft. Let's use DI. So skip a loop one would be rep. Rep Z, I think. Scan while not end of string and string element equals the um, scan value. So what we're looking for is um, 0, 020 which is space. So we want to do repsy scasby. I think that's right. All right, SCSB. When the first character past the leading spaces is scanned. All right, so yes, this will increment it to the next space. And then we want to do JCXZ um, to return. Um, then we want to, I don't know what we want to do to get the length. So to do length, do fish like touching you? I don't know. So let's see, we're going to move um, 
going to also need AX. I guess um, AX is clubbered. Move AX prefix sub um, SI AX. I think that's right. Move, um, what the hell is sub? No, AXSI. Um, move um, prefix length SI, ah, AX. That seems fine. Um, and then, so after we do that, Um, let's actually just go through this in the debugger, perhaps. So window, we're going to go to pass and let's get to here. Uh, let's see what our locals are. Oh, we don't have that. This is assembly. CPU registers, data, memory at, DI. Okay, so we do have a prefix there. Um, so let's um, step in. All right, so we move DI. Um, we clobber AX. We compare it. Z is zero, so we jump, then we increase di and decrement cx. Um, then prefix gets di. Then we move al, we're now down to 35, 33, which is a bit weird. I thought we would have more. Hmm. Maybe that should have been a repi. Um, the fish is just there. We're not going to talk about the fish anymore. I'll take the fish away. Her name's Wanda. <laughs> uh, she's an old gnome um, fish. Oh. So let's see, data. So obviously I think I have the reps mixed up. Um, I think you need to be running mate or something. I'm not sure. Um, Oh, look, there's a tripod page. Indicator fish. Gnome 3.4 has has wonder right i don't know it's 
go to pass. And let's jump to here. I think it's F8. No, it's F7, I think. No, it was F8. Or is it Ronda? There's too much. Exfus fish. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so that, that one doesn't move. Oh dear. All right, so run to cursor is F7. Um, did we not get to cursor? Don't tell me I've corrupted the stack. I do have the test thing running, don't I? Yep. Or is it hung? Okay, let's close it and then start again. Um, and then we'll just run to here. Here we go. Uh, CPU registers. Um, that didn't work. It's not doing what I want it to do. This angers me. Let's try and figure out what's happening. Um, can I just, is there like a command to do module pass? Help? I don't know what the command is. Pass and we'll go down to here to F7. Um, so then let's do window CPU registers data memory at DI. So we're at test server and we have 20 in the register, hex 20, which is a space. So what should rep a SCASB do? Well, SCASB, if we go to here, subtracts the destination string element from AX and updates the flags. So if it was equal, it should be ZF or something. If it's prefixed with rep A or rep Z. Oh, it's rep -ne, rep -ne, not Z. All right. All right, I've, I've done it wrong. So rep not equal, rep equal. I should probably look up JCXZ. Um, that seems like jump if register CX equals zero. Yep. All right. So that's not going to burn my house down. Um, so let's check back at the test server. Uh, let's go to our pass thing. Let's hit up here. Um, space 29 hex. Or is that just regular 29? No, that's 29. So let's see where we are in the DI register. Oh. We've jumped past the space. 
Okay, that makes sense. Right. Yeah, okay. What if you burnt my house down? Please don't. Um, that's actually pretty good. We don't need to increment then. Um, so let's see, we saved the prefix, uh, prefix length, but that includes the space. So we'll have to subtract one, then skip spaces, no spaces here, and then it returns. And that must mean we passed it correctly. So some tweaks here. We're going to subtract one um, from SI. Actually, we could be pretty sneaky about this. See, if we, um, if we decrement, oh, that wouldn't work if this is zero. We're not guaranteed to have gone past all of them. Um, I think I'll just subtract one. Although that's a bit dicey too. Um, the length here isn't, if CX is zero, then it's always going to be one after. Yeah, so we should just, um, decrement DI and increment CX. And what's AL at? Um, let's try and use BX for this. And we'll just clob a BX too. Why not? So we have code here. So we increment DI and decrement CX to um, skip 3A, um, set up prefix, um, and then what we're going to do is Um, skip non-spaces. And then if it's a zero, should we return there? Probably, right? Nah. Um, but this could be zero, couldn't it? No. It could be zero. So what we should just do there is jump to return. Yeah, so Uh, return if end of text. Then we set up the prefix. My keyboard is not sitting flat on the table and it is annoying me. Because every time I type, it goes up and down. <laughs> All right, um, so we're going to do skip non-spaces. Um, so we at least have one here, set prefix, skip one or more non-spaces, um, return if so this will be check for, um, what's the prefix thing? Check for that. Let's 
set prefix, skip one or more non spaces. Then we um, walk back. No, but then that won't work because that's the current thing. So we won't, we can't walk back. So we'll be always pointing to the next one. Um, and so we will then deck BX um, where one ahead. And then we want to skip zero or more spaces. Okay. And so by the end of that, prefix should be set and we should be at um, the next thing. So let's check the server thing. So what do we do um, when we first send stuff? Send a message of the day. Let's put a whole bunch of spaces there, huh? And this will just help us test stuff. So let's see. Um, Set debug equals WD test bot. Bot test. Pass and let's run to here after pass prefix. Uh, let's do data memory at DI. It's still one ahead, um, which isn't good. Shouldn't be one ahead. Um, that's actually kind of strange. Um, let's go back to our parser. And let's run here. And then let's see. What we're doing. Um, so let's see data memory at DI test server. Um, and then after this, it's at 20. So we also want to skip more spaces, but we saved the prefix length. Why is there a trailing space? Hang on. We're too past it. I think something with my logic is messed up. So we move AX to 0 20, and then we get to the 20, we get to the space, um, huh? So it's actually going to be one after. It's a bit weird. Don't like that. Um, rep not equal Scasby. So let's see where we're at now. So we're at 20 here and we want to skip spaces. So I predict we should end up um, on the zero here.
So data memory at DA. Once again, we're, we're one ahead. So, hmm. I feel like I was warned about this. Uh, but repne. <sighs> you know, what, let's get rid of CX. Uh, we'll replace, we'll just use SI and DI. Um, and DI can be the end. Add CX to DI. And then we won't worry about CX. We'll just compare these two pointers, SI and DI. We'll work on SI and DI is going to be the end. So we're going to check that DI is that. If it's a prefix, we're going to increment di. And we're going to, sorry, si. Then we're going to compare um, si and di and jump if they're equal to return. There we go. Move prefix SI. So we're incrementing SI as we go. Uh, move AL20. And so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to move AL, um, so move BL SI compare ALBL uh, but then that also doesn't check for the length hmm how did I handle this in my um, state thing loads SB deck BX stores SB deck DX compare AL So let's see, move prefix SI, move AL 20. Move BL. Can we just put, can we compare um, a memory operand? Compare. Compare register eight. Yeah, it looks like we can do that. I think. Maybe let's just try compiling that. All right, the compiler was okay with that. Compare SI BL. Um, God, this is not working well. Uh, I know I'm kind of code golfing this a bit, but Um, so we want to skip while um, SI is 
um, skip spaces. So we have AL as 20. We want to compare um, SI with AL. Um, Should we also increment SI? Yeah, well, we will unconditionally increment SI here. Um, right, jump, um, skip not spaces. So we'll jump not equals skip not spaces, but that will be an infinite loop. So we need to increment that. Um, but we also need to compare that and return. Um, but we also do that compare over here. So we can just get rid of that. Compare SIDI, return, compare it there. Is DI after or the, the length? Oh God, off by one errors. No. Okay, hang on a second. Uh, we have an array of um, 10 elements. Shit, we have two pointers. Pointers point to the start of a block. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Um, so if we add CX, um, that will be at the end because a length of one will point to Um, di is the character after the string. Next byte after the string. I believe that's true. Um, so we will read that. Jump CX zero, um, return. I'll just put that there. So we can always assume it's greater than zero. So we skip that. Now, if SI and DI are after it, we should check this before we do anything, I think. <laughs> oh God, my nose. Hey, I only sneezed once. I guess the other ones are just gonna come out later. Uh. So we check for that. We already have one element here. So we increment it then, and then skip spaces, take care of, will also take care of nothing. So this will possibly loop zero times. Actually, no, it will return if it's empty. And then we compare that and we increment and we skip if not space. And then
we move BX we'll just put that in a register anyway so sub BX SI Um, we'll just quickly, so sub BX SI, wait, which way around should it go? I think it should be fine. Um, sub BX SI, since now we've got here, um, I think we need to decrement BX, one, one ahead, sub BX SI, we move prefix then BX and then we just skip spaces. But wait. Skip spaces should always run once, right? Okay, I think so. God. This is not the, this is not the way to do it. But now that we've changed everything, uh, maybe there are some instructions we can use. Like, uh, Lods, but then CX is also the loop counter. I guess we'll just write these hairy looking loops instead of using CX. Um, mainly because I oh know SCASB just didn't work for us. Um, it's a, it will increment it way too far off. I would not cook your stuff in bleach. Although we could just undo all this and then use SCASB. But then we have to keep things in sync. Um, all right, let's step through this code in a debugger and um, see what happens. Those are local loops, so I have to set them accordingly. So let's go over to the pass and let's hit up here. So let's look at our registers. So um, let's see, memory at SI should be, yep, the start and DI should be here at CF. Yep, correct. So we move AL with the value of SI, we compare it to 3A. Uh, if it's equal, we then increment SI. We set the prefix to SI. What is SI at the moment? Yep, that's correct. 
move BX with SI, move AL20. Uh, we can pair it, SI and DI. Um, if they're equal, we return because we've run out of space. We can pair um, the value at SI with AL. If not, we increment and then we eat through that. Where are we? VR, so we should do four more iterations of the loop. One, two, three, four. And so this should then be equal. No. Okay, problem. So we compare SI. We increment, then we jump if not equal. So When we do a compare here, is this ever not all zeros? All right, I think I've messed up. All right. Uh, let's do LODs. We can use LODs here. LODs. Twelve clocks for one byte. Wait, what does MOV do? I mean, I guess that's fine. Not sure why compare um, is not working though. See for compare, please. Compare. Yeah, I mean, what? Mob CX AL um, SI. Compare CL. All right, let's try that. We'll try an intermediate register. All right, that did not, that has frozen things. Um, set debug equals W bot test. So let's go down over to pass, um, pass message. Let's jump on over to skip not spaces. Uh, memory at SI. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it should be like six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What? What's happening? AX is 20. All 
All right, so we're at 20 now, definitely. So we're going to return, move CL. All right, so CL should be 20. Compare it, it's equal. Why is it doing jump not equal? I don't get it. I don't get it. Oh, angry. Angry man here. So we're at 20 now. Compare CL should give us zero. Right. And that would be 20 again. Then 6A should give us, that also gives us zero. Why is why is CX 6A? Oh, it should be 6F. Twenty. Oh, is it using the zero register and my increment is clobbering that? Oh dear. All right, let's try and figure this out. So we need to be able to test all of them. Uh, but we also want to increment it. We could increment it at the start. We also need to increment it at the end. What if we just add? All right, let's check the actual thing. So compare uses these flags, S, C, zero. So what if, what's jump? What's the jump equal? So jump equal, jump not equal uses the zero flag, equal zero. But yeah, we're, we're trying to use the zero flag, but increment is touching the zero flag. So wait, why is it? So increment touches the zero flag. What about add? They're touching so many flags. Oh, this is pain. Um, this is a little bit of pain.
that's also something new we've learned. Um, uh, so, we would have to put it in the register, I guess, and then do a compare. Like that. Um, I guess. Like that. Let's try that. Just restart the test server real quick. Let's get back to this. So we skip stuff that isn't spaces and we hope to break out of the loop. Here we go. So let's see, what is our uh, memory at? So SI points to 20. Um, we've put the decrement and the BX around the wrong way. So that's already good. Um, let's see, CPU registers, BX. We sub BX from SI. That doesn't work well at all, actually. Um, BX was our prefix before. And we have a negative number now. So BX is our prefix and then we have si and bx is going to be larger than si i think not sure why that overflowed we'll see in a little bit but we move the prefix length then we're going to do the same thing but we're going to um Whoa, skip spaces. That didn't skip spaces. Compare SI and DI jump. Oh, I did jump not equal. It should be jump equal. Um, so what's happening here? BX is SI. Down here we have BX. Um, we subtract um, BX. You subtract SI from BX, and SI is only going to SI is going to be larger actually. Um, so let's just try adding that instead. Um, not sure about that decrement there. Let's try again. It has frozen. It's not good. Maybe it didn't freeze. No, it did freeze because Whatcom didn't run. Okay. So let's look at our window, our registers. BX is 3595, SI is 35AO. 
we subtract, we added it together, that didn't work. Um, so that probably should have been a subtract. We decrement it. Now it's time to skip spaces. Um, compare CL and AL. Jump not equal. But they are equal. Oh, that should be jump equal. Okay, hang on. So, so um, SI, one, two, three, four, BI, um, BX equals 1000. So how do we get the difference there? Um, Let's open up Python. So 1000 minus 1234. Um, what if we do 1234 minus 1000? Can we just flip the sign? Wait, 1000 plus 1234. Yeah, okay, so that doesn't work. So how do we flip the sign? Um, sign. x86 flip sign. Neg. All right. So I think we do um, neg bx. Wait, did I fix the other bug? Okay. This code is not beautiful. So window, um, go to pass. Um, let's jump down here. Window, CPU registers, BX, B, A. So do we really have a length of A? Um, data memory at prefix. Symbol. That's not global, is it? Um, where is prefix? Um, data memory at 358C. Um, hang on. Uh, near follow. I think, no. I wanna go here. Show me the address. Okay, that didn't work. Um, data memory at 358C. Um, can we put star 358C? All right. And then 0A. So let's do data memory at 
358C, 358C, plus 0 times A. All right, that's correct. So we've done it. I think. Um. <clears throat> Not sure what we're supposed to do here. Um, this code is suboptimal. Um, so let's spend a little bit toying with it. See if we can get a deeper understanding. So, you do a compare here, then a jump. Now we can't do conditional returns. So we have to use return there. We do an increment SI here. We move the prefix there. Uh, and we move AL to be 20, hex 20. <coughs> we compare SI and DI. See, if we were using CX, we could replace that with a decrement and jump if it's zero. So actually, let's just try moving this to use CX. Um, so let's see. Increment SI, decrement CX. Um, we don't need to worry about uh, doing um, We don't need to worry about storing addresses. We'll use CX for the length. So let's see, deck CX, um, jump, jump up zero, return. Um, then we mods, We lods SB BX and then we compare it with, can we compare with an immediate? Yeah. Let's actually just try a space there. So lods SB. Loads it into AX, I think. Okay. Um, compare AL that and jump. Um, all right, we have to remember the CX value before, don't we? Move BX CX, sub BX CX, neg CX, that's a lot of instructions there. Um, we move BX to CX. Wait, BX is, uh, CX is getting smaller. So how about we just do subtract? And then we move that. 
then we decrement CX. Jump zero return. Loads AX. Compare AL space. Jump if equal. So that seems a bit more reasonable. Let's see if this code even works though. Lods S B A L. Wait, we don't specify which register. It just does it. So we'll go down to our code here and we'll run through our pass prefix code. Let's view our registers. So we move 3A, compare if it's 3A, and we jump. Um, we increment SI. Yep, to skip over it. And we decrement CX. We set the prefix to SI now. Are we at the correct place? Probably. Move BX to have SI. Um, decrement CX. No, that should be at the end. Should be after that. Because um, we want to check if it's a zero now. Since we already did the decrement. Although, hmm. Just put remove that. That could work, I think. So we decrement the count. Um, if it's a zero, then we don't even try um, loading. We return. Yeah, that might probably work better. Loads SB, compare AL space. Um, let's see if we can just watch um, DI. Um, why is that all zeros? Oh, it's because I've got at the wrong thing. It should be SI. Oh, we've gotten to the first zero. So let's sub the BX, we get B. We decrement one to get A, then we save it. And skip spaces is just basically the same thing. <coughs> and then, so what is SI at? Well, SI has gone past the buffer. I'm not sure if my old code did that. But uh, this is all pretty sketch. Um, we look at this code. Um, we're not updating a manual counter as we go. Although we are comparing it to a counter at the end. Um, hmm. Although I don't see why it should be skipping past. Um, let's go back. Do we want to mess? Okay, we'll compare the code um, afterwards. Um, so this is our uh, old code. So let's go quickly back to our pass.nas file. 
Um, so we load, we compare, and then we, if it's, no, it should still be at the, um, it should be at the point after it, no? Because um, if it's, if it's a space, it'll keep going. Otherwise it should just return and we will be at that point. Oh, hang on. Lods is loading it and incrementing it. So we would want to decrement that then handle CX. Yeah, I'm not. We're not going to go, we're not going to deal with that. Um, but we will look at this code a bit more. Um, let's just delete that. Can I delete things here? Yeah. So we have AX is clobbered, BX is clobbered, CX is not clobbered. We don't use any stack space, which is good because then we can factor stuff out. All right, so we skip 3A, we set the prefix, we skip not spaces. We can, we can remove, um, if we can do an immediate, um, we, we don't even need to do those hard coded numbers. That makes it a bit more, um, it makes it a bit easier, I guess, um, a bit more readable. My brain is just turning off right now. It wants to do the, your computer is now ready to turn off sound. All right, um, we are using CL here. We're using three registers, but that's what they're for. Um, so CL. We have this code here that handles um, doing movements and comparisons and having to switch between them. Okay, we're not using... We can actually remove that. Um, are we using the A register? Accumulator, it looks like we're not. So we could actually free up a register and see where we do CL, we can do AL instead. And now we're no longer using CX there. Um, BX is used to hold something in memory, that's good. Um, sub, neg, decrement, that's fine. Um, move prefix length to BX, yep. It should be skip content. So what else can we do here? <coughs> move BX SI. Yeah, the only thing that's causing all a huge headache and really needing another register aside from BX, but that's just to avoid um, reading stuff from memory, um, is this weird kind of loopy thing where we do compare SI and DI, okay. Um, but then we increment at the end of the loop and then compare. And that means that because we're incrementing between the read 
and the compare, we have to use an intermediate register. Um, and that's no good, as Sonic once said. So can we reorganize this a little bit? Um, we have this, these two need to stick together. So the only other option would to put the increment before the read, which doesn't work unless we like make the loop work different. So let's think about that. Um, let's say we increment at the start of the loop. Uh, that would also mean we could skip, that would only work if we're skipping that. Um, but then the prefix would be off. Oh no. This is kind of equivalent to do while with a pointer plus plus at the end. So, hmm. Is there a string instruction for this? Uh, maybe SCASB? Or LODs? We're not using LODs here too much. Um, but if there's a place to use it, it would probably be here. Let's find all our string instructions. LODs, loop, loop not equal, uh, move, move. Okay, we're gonna look for SCAS. Where's the SCAS, please? SCAS dest string. So what is SCAS equivalent to? If we can go up and it could take us to, is there no documentation for SCAS? Um, string operations, please. Compare string, no, we're not using that. String ops, string ops. Gotta be up here somewhere. Stars, scars. But that uses DI. I mean, we could try and switch to use DI instead of SI. That'd be weird. Um, so we do scas and it would give us the proper flag. I mean, let's try that then. Um, can we do Scars. Let's just search up scars.
Oh, B. Oh, dear. Okay, well. Yeah, I mean, I would have to rewind it, I think. Um, if I was going to do... SCAS? Uh, I mean, let's try it, but is it really worth it? Um, let's see. SDI, let's replace DI with XI. Um, let's replace SI with DI, and let's replace XI with SI. Um, and then let's move uh, DI to SI, then add SI CX. Um, and then let's do this uh, SCAS thing. So that would be SCAS B. Um, it can't do an, an immediate, can it? Move AL space SCASB DI uh, SCASB jump not equal Hmm Let's see how this goes, if at all. Operation size not specified. What? All right. So we increment that, we set the prefix. Um, let's wait until we get down to here. And let's check our memory at DI. Yes, yeah, so we're one too late. So we would have to decrement it anyway. Um, Yeah, because SCAS reads it, then tells you what it is, then increments it. Such a weird instruction. Okay, let's undo that. I guess we're going to go with this. So the final thing we're going to do is um, global prefix, global prefix length. So let's just try and print the prefix after each one. Um, we we'll also have to move prefix length zero. Uh, 
move um, prefix length zero here. Okay, so now let's go, um, I guess, log general in our logic, pass message, um, call log general. So what's log general do? Log incoming, log general. Um, let's get our message as, we're gonna write this as, what, will it, what, what do we call, what did we call it? Um, prefix message. I don't want to, I don't want to log it that way. Um, let's just do, we'll log incoming again. Um, so we'll have a double log, double log incoming, but we will push, um, we will do move SI Move SI prefix, move CX prefix length. Stone prefix, stone prefix length. And then we should be able to see it receiving the prefixes or freeze, because sometimes it does that. Pass.naz, all right, 39 byte. Where else did you complain? There, move byte, prefix length. Uh, actually no, prefix length is a word, not a byte. All right, so what's the problem here? Um, it is definitely not printing that correctly. Oh, I'm not dereferencing them. Um, B2. Let's try that. All right, so as you can see, we've managed to pass the test server thing there. Um, let's see if this works with Twitch. All right, we correctly read tmi.twitch.tv, although yeah, it reads tmi.twitch.tv. So we've managed to read the prefix correctly each time. Um, that's good. So let's see. Um, we'll just have the return there so I don't ruin the stack, right? Uh, so after we pass the prefix, we check if that's empty. 
I think. Maybe? Yeah. And then we would then we would pass the command as well. Um, so the command is just basically um, a smaller version of that. So we'll get that done next time. And then the parameters will just be um, a set of eight, I guess. Uh, we'll need a pretty printer to actually like print this nicely. Um, format to print nicely. We want to print the prefix. We want to print the command. Um, param one, param two, param three, param four. That's enough. We won't ever need more than four parameters. And if we do, we can just add them, I guess. Um, and then CRLF, we don't need that. Um, and that should be fine. I mean, what's the syntax for commands? Um, command is just something not separated by spaces, basically. Um, parameters are Wait, is there only a single space after command? Yeah. I don't care. We're playing this hard and we're playing this fast. We will allow multiple spaces. Oh. So there's only one space allowed between each. So params, space. Oh, there's multiple spaces. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Um, and so the param can either be to null CRLF. or whatever. Okay. Prem can be anything CR F. You know, we can just kind of enumerate them like this. Word one, word two. So we just have multiple things like that. All right. Um, so next time we will continue with more of this. Um, that is all. That's all of it. And then we can get some bot logic going. Look at the fishy. Um, last thing we're going to do is maybe try and back up files. So if we go to stream, uh, we haven't done this for a while. We'll just copy all our bot stuff here. Don't know why it's 700 megabytes. Um, that's suspicious, but okay whatever um so i'll do that off stream i'll see you later everyone